Yo, what is going on Raiders, the boss here, and welcome to the second round of the St. Patrick's Day event, where we are going to beat again first all five approaching waves, and in the end we are going to do the revenge. So here we are already in the first round, and like in all other events, I've prepared myself with a lot of buffs in advance. I think you all know them by now, and I don't want to bore you by listing them all again. Again, I'll post the link of this new base layout on my Facebook page, and the link to it is here in the description. Alright, it seems like we're almost done with the first wave, and obviously it was a bit stronger than in the previous parts, but still I can live with 30% damage, so let's see what the next round has to offer. Okay, wave 2 includes a lot of air approaching units, around 53 helicopter guys, or yeah, I don't really know how they are called, but either way I think you know what I mean. So they are coming to destroy my stronghold, and are getting supported by some ground troops. So right in the beginning I'm deploying all my bombardiers on the stronghold, and let's see what the enemy got. Alright, it seems like the helicopter guys focus only on the towers and move straight towards them, but surprisingly to me my sky harpoons can handle them very well. Honestly I've expected them to be stronger, but that's fine with me as it's a lower threat to my stronghold. And actually what is really surprising me is that I've only got 6% damage in the whole fight. I mean in round 1 I've lost almost 30% of it, but I guess that doesn't matter as the next wave might be a lot stronger again. Welcome to wave 3, which is again without any air troops from the enemy, but on the other hand with more ground troops. So here we are able to win a lot of gold already, in total 728,000 gold and clouds, which is in my opinion already a massive amount of resources, and I hope we are able to get it all. Alright, so it seems like everything is running according to my plan, that all of the enemy's troops gather in groups in front of my crystal spire and the cannoneer fort, where they are getting blown away. Of course, I'm making sure with my ammunition that I prevent the enemy from breaking through my walls to get inside of my base, because then my towers have no cover from the enemy's attacks. Yeah, and again, this fight is almost over, I got only 26% damage here and we are ready to move on to the next wave. Ok, wave 4 is approaching here with more than 100 ground troops, and again it seems like everything is going right here, but unfortunately some of the enemy's troops start to attack the walls which are covering the edges of this base. It looks like that this spot is the only weakness here, because I didn't have enough walls when I was making this layout to provide this wall line with a second layer. So this base is very weak there, which might put me in a disadvantage, and even though I'm using my ammunition on these troops, they are able to break through and make their way inside of my base, and then are able to take out the towers which are standing there in a very short time. And that's exactly what I was talking about in wave 3, that when the enemy is able to break through, it can be very devastating, but in the end, even those troops inside of my base weren't able to cause a big difference in the outcome, which means we only got 31% damage here. Wave 5 is the last attack from the enemy on my base before we can do the revenge, and here we will be able to encounter the boss of this second part. Everything starts off in the exact same way like we have seen it in the previous part, but then Shamrox enters the battle, which may cause some problems if he's able to make it into the center, so let's see what is going to happen. So again, I'm making use of the snowball quite frequently, especially on the spots where large numbers of enemy's troops are gathering, and when having a look at the weak spot of the space at the bottom, I'm lucky that no real threat is coming from that side, as only a few troops are attacking the wall. Therefore I can say that this fight is turning out quite easy, but still Shamrock who is now making his way up into the middle can cause a problem, and due to his long range attack he's able to burn down that front row of my towers. Then he's focusing on the walls which are not able to keep him outside of my base, and now the scenario which I mentioned before is taking place, but fortunately without any other troops left. I'm also lucky here that he first focuses on my resource bunkers, and through that he's not taking away any of my towers, which would definitely decrease my defensive power. However, I don't think that this base is a very good option for every round in this event, because only a small amount of towers are able to shoot on him, but as we have seen in wave 2, where a lot of air troops attacked my base, it was able to handle them very easily, so for the third upcoming St. Patrick's Day event, I think I'm gonna switch again between my previous base layout from the first part and this one, but still Shamrock is only able to deal 41% damage to my base, and that's why we are able now to move on to the revenge, which is probably the most anticipated thing from you in this event. Alright, let's do it. I'm gonna attack Shamrock's base from the top and before I'm deploying any of my troops, I'm activating the mirror shield and drop two fog barrels in front of the cannoneer fort. They're very strong and kill every troop from us very fast, so the fog barrel here is a very important thing in order to win here. Then I'm deploying all of my troops, 24 bombardiers on the left and 24 on the right side, and as you can see, it is very easy to take out the cannoneer's fort with that strategy, and the main threats are already gone from this island. When one group of the bombardiers reach the crystal spire at the bottom of this map, I'm making use of the third fog barrel again to make sure that they will survive that battle while the upper group focuses on Shamrock, 
and then those I'm supporting with another Berserk Barrel to finish this battle as early as possible. Shamrock goes down very fast, and then they're making their way down to the cannon right next to it and towards the last remaining Crystal Spire end. And as soon as this tower goes down, the only thing left to do here is wait for the Bombardiers to clear out the space to come victorious out of this fight, and the only thing left for me to do is... So here we are again at the end of this video. I'm well aware of the fact that the third event has already approached our island and I will make sure that I bring to you a video about that as soon as possible. If you want to see the first fight in this event you can click now on the video and there I'm sharing again all my strategies and approaches to it with you. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you have enjoyed this video and for more upcoming things. This is it from me, have a great raid, peace out.